This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. I really do appreciate everything you do. You might check us out on Patreon if you get a chance, and if you'd like to subscribe there, you'll get uh, some extra content that you can't find anywhere else. And please do check us out on these other platforms. You might subscribe to one just in case something happens to us on YouTube. You just never know what's going to happen with YouTube, trust me. And then we've also got the podcast, the Gun Guy TV Firearms Podcast, comes out twice a month and is available on your, your uh, favorite podcast player. I can't talk today. <laughs> What's going on with that? All right, next to me right here, I've got this neat old rifle. This is an 1873, model of 1873 trap door. Now, I find the rifle fascinating and when I got it fascinating for this reason. I just recently did a video for you on the 1898 Craig Jorgensen, Craig, Jor Craig Jorgensen, and uh, what a great rifle it was. And we talked about uh, at that time, the fact that the United States military had adopted that rifle to get away from the older cartridge, the 4570. Well, one of the rifles that was replaced by the Craig Jorgensen was the 1873 trap door. So I find it very interesting that just a short time later, the same fellow that lent me the other gun has lent me this one, which I'm very grateful for. By the way, I really love these. These are just a lot of fun to shoot. If you've never had an opportunity to shoot one of these, I encourage you to do it. Unfortunately, I cannot with this one. He would prefer that I don't. So uh, there we are. But I'll see if I can get my hands on another one. We'll take it to the range. In the meantime, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this rifle that I have, but I'm also going to direct you to a different channel because there's no sense in my trying to play expert here about these old guns because I'm certainly not. However, it just so happens that Duelist 1954, not long ago, I, I don't know when he did it, but I've, I've seen it, did a whole series on the guns from 19 or from 1873 and one of the videos he did is a great video it's very uh, detailed in the in the history of these guns on the 1873 trap door so i'm going to put a link in the description to that video go check out his channel by the way if you're interested in black powder guns that guy knows more about them than anybody i've ever met so he's got a really great channel and, and i'm actually i subscribe to it so i would i would encourage you to subscribe as well this one, I can't, at first I wasn't sure whether this was a replica or an original. I think it's an original because on the side plate, it does say U.S. Springfield. Whether that indicates anything, I don't know. In my research, I couldn't figure it out. Uh, it does say model of 1873. And there's a, a couple of other little markings on them, and I'll show you the markings on the site and the various markings on the gun here. And maybe if you're an expert in it, you can let me know what you think as to whether this might be an original or whether it's a reproduction, but it, it sure looks like an original to me. Now, if you've never had anything to do with these, these are really fun to shoot because they're uber simple, but they're they're fairly accurate, even though they're short. It's a, it's the it's a trapdoor carbine in 4570, and they're so simple to use it's it's mind boggling. There's basically I think three positions of the hammer. You got a, a, a kind of a quarter cock which. I'm not sure it does much of anything. It's a like safe position, maybe. You've got a half cock, which allows you to then open the trap door. You can feed your round, and then you close the trap door completely, cock the hammer to full cock, and you're, you're ready to rock. Aim, fire, bang. Hammer falls. Now, in order to eject the old cartridge in order, and load a new one, it's the same procedure. Half cock. I went to full cock there, sorry, half cock, and then open up the trap door. And as you open the door fully, there's a little ejector that will eject the spent cartridge. So it spits them out. Some of them really spit them out and some of them not so much. And it really just depends. It's like any other gun. Some have great ejectors and some have lousy ones, but I've seen them just really launch them. And other ones, you know, kind of bloop them out, but it works, but they work very reliably. Anyway, put your new shell in. Cock, you know, close the door, cock it to full cock, and go again. Now, by today's standards, this is incredibly antiquated. I get it. But when you consider that when this was actually adopted, I think was in the 1860s, 
they were going trying to get away from muzzle loading firearms and get into something that had a, a cartridge that was a cartridge firearm and just about every country on earth was moving that direction and this was a way for them to do it and again if you watch duelist 1954 he'll get into the detail of why they designed this particular type of gun this is actually the second iteration of it these guns were actually built this way the original ones original ones were muskets or rifles that were modified into carbines and these were built to be exactly what they are the surprising thing to me is that the United States stuck with them as long as they did because many other countries had moved to better guns, frankly, and we were still using these. However, the fact that they are simple and probably fairly simple to make and very simple to use and easy to train makes a lot of sense. And if you consider the fact that a soldier could reload this and fire very quickly compared to somebody having to take a minute or more to reload a muzzle-loading rifle or muzzle-loading musket, these things, the guy could probably fire four, five, six, eight times in the time it would take somebody else to load that muzzle loader. So this was a huge advantage. And by today's standards, it's very antiquated. But back then, it was a, it was a huge thing to go to a cartridge that had the primer, the powder, and the bullet all together in a cartridge that could be loaded all at once rather than piecemeal. That was a huge improvement. Anyway, there's the 1873 trapdoor. What a great gun to get my hands on. I'm really grateful to have gotten it. And uh, I'll make sure, as I said, you get some uh, great pictures of it here and you can see the various different markings on it. And uh, I, I would urge you to go check out Duelist 1954 and his channel and check out the, the, the video he does on these because it's very informative and there's no sense in my trying to do better than he can. I'm, I'm not going to manage it. So I'll put that link in the description. Well, thank you very much again for all of your support. Have a wonderful week, and wherever you go, whatever you do, please be safe.